Good morning, my name is Daniel and I'm with Incinerine Toilets. Today in Algonquin Park, I will be joining Kegel Heating and Cooling as they look to install a Cinderella propane model toilet. I'm hoping this video will help you as you consider best practices and some things to watch out for as you look to install a propane model. We'll be going over power source, voltage of the toilet, consumption, and some things to consider when looking at the venting kits. So join along and uh, we'll see how we do with all these mosquitoes that were just born last night. So we've just arrived on site and I found out this location does have a septic on site but the septic is being decommissioned uh, as it is uh, no longer to code and so this is the reason for upgrading to uh, Cinderella uh, propane incineration toilet. So first couple of things we got to work on is the venting and the propane. So once we source where we're going to tap into the current propane setup and then we can run the propane lines and get once we figure out where the venting is going to run then we can start working on the, the holes for the vent once we know the exact location of the toilet. After that we also got to consider the power source. Now this is a Cinderella gas which only requires 12 volts DC so it can run off a battery. Uh, you can convert it to 120 so you could plug it into a wall if there was power but this cottage is off grid so they are going to do uh, a battery setup and I believe they don't have any solar here uh, so they may just do a battery for the short, short term and charge the battery with the generator when needed uh, eventually I think they probably could put a 100 watt solar panel right there uh, and that would be enough to charge a battery so yeah let's go see what the guys are up to and where we're going to tap in we'll check in later so here we coming into the bathroom and you can see our original plan was to just put the new toilet where the current toilet is and use underneath the toilet as a vent, the in air intake vent. Um, but our first challenge is there's a window right there and with the gas model you can't put any vents on the venting, the exhaust. And so we're just confirming with the owner whether uh, there's a couple options. You can either go straight up behind here or we have to move the toilet location which would mean adjusting the where the sink is so we're trying to decide what to do and go from there. One thing when you're working on an island is always make sure you double check you have all the parts so otherwise you're making a trip back to the mainland not like we would ever do that. Now, I mentioned earlier that the septic system is, is the reason they're, they're changing over. Uh, the contractor was letting me know that to empty that septic tank, to get it pumped out, was $1,400. And so, uh, that's something to consider too, even if your propane or your septic system is not out of code, but you're paying those ongoing costs of having it pumped out all the time because it's remote, uh, that can add up as well. And so, that's where upgrading to a Cinderella uh, propane could, uh, or any of the incineration toilets. If you have a holding tank and you're remote, uh, that could help save on some ongoing costs. So this cottage here you can see has a lot of crawl space underneath, which makes it really nice for running the propane line and easy access uh, for running any wires. If, for example, they wanted to put a battery box underneath the cottage, uh, they could do that that makes it for an easier and tidier install. So 
So when looking at your venting and assessing, as mentioned before, we got to go under the window in this case uh, because the owner does not want to move the sink. Um, now usually you might have a little space in the bathroom where you can move the, the shift the toilet to the right or left so you can miss any studs. Um, you know, if you were at the edge of the window, you'd have a double stud. So these are all things to consider when you're looking at installing your toilet in the space availability. In this case, we're, we don't have any other option but going through where the stud is. And so we're gonna have to uh, do some modifications and make sure that it's all supported when we're done the job. Okay, so what are you putting on the pipe there? Uh, just soap and water, so it slides in. Slides in easily. You're right. We are in. So how far off do you have to leave it off the wall for the gas model? I like to leave it off about five inches. For service. For service and getting your hand in behind, like if you're pulling it off and on the, the pipe, you can just get your hand in there and hold the yeah. pipe. And with this one, it has the gas valve and everything? Oh, right, so yes. I like to leave room for that. So if you were moving the toilet in place, like if you're doing the installation on your own, put the toilet where you want it and uh, you can pop the front off here and when you take the ashtray out there's a, a spot here where you can put two screws attached to the floor so if you're working here by yourself you could place the toilet pass it to the floor and then go on the outside and push the pipe in there's a few different challenges with the venting on this in this case scenario or a few things we need to consider so there was the window and then there's a stairwell coming up and so which means we didn't want the the venting sticking out too far to go around the east eaves so in this case we're going to keep the venting in and just penetrate through the the overhang that way it's not in the way of the stairs at the end of the day it's going to look good the owner can always build a box around it if you'd like and paint it brown blend in so one of the most common questions we get is how much propane does one of these incineration toilets use? And so here we have a 100 pound cylinder. If it was a 20 pounder, we say that on average you can get about 60 to 90 incinerations out of a 20 pound. And that's the size of a, a barbecue tank. And that reason for that spread is depending on how much overlap you have on your incinerations. The more overlap you have, the, the more incinerations you'll, you'll get out of a, a propane tank. So here you'll see they have a 3 8 line coming over and they've tapped into the main line that they have for the cottage and as they're powering other things like the fridge off here and uh, some other appliances as well, the stove. So there you go. In Norway, you can actually have a propane tank sitting inside a building with a con quick connect. Uh, and unfortunately, in North America, you're not allowed to do that. In all installations in North America, we have to run a line from the propane tank being outside into the building to keep it separated. As you can see here, we've just installed the Cinderella gas model and it's in test. We're doing a test, so we've hooked up to a car battery. Uh, so this obviously isn't a permanent setup and as you can hear the fan is running so it's working. So now that we're done the testing, the, when the cottager comes up he can choose to bring up a battery and hook it up uh, as a more permanent solution. So you probably build a little battery box either inside or outside, run the cables through and then you can just hook that up. If he wants to add solar then you can have a little charge controller in there as well. Yeah that's it, it's very minimal power. Another successful install.